Hello, everyone. Today is Monday, August 3rd. It's about uh, an hour and a half after the regular session close. And I did trade live in my funded Lilu account today. You can tell this is a live account by the uh, yellow border. A SIM account has a red border like this. So, yeah, it was a losing day today. I was down uh, 595. My goals today were 600 and 500. Uh, sadly, I reached an equity high of uh, $400 and then got stopped out after that. But it's okay. I uh, stuck to my rules and did not trade again. I, I took the loss, a losing day, and that's okay. And that's one of the great things about the auto trader is eliminating uh, emotions and stress. The way I trade this is, you know, I pretty much turn it on before I go to bed at night and wake up in the morning, and I either have a winner or a loser, and I'm not sweating it and uh, raising my blood pressure, trading the charts all day long, making a gazillion trades. It's really difficult to do. So the auto trader in that regard uh, makes for very low stress t trading. And losing is a part of trading. There'll be some losers. But it also showed me that uh, I need to adjust my settings here. I think this uh, volatility um, sensitivity is a little bit too tight. I think I should raise this because this trade right here is the one that was the final nail in the coffin. Had this bar not been red here, I would not have taken uh, this trade, and I might have had another chance to uh, have a winner. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but um, probably this bar would have been blue as well, and then maybe I would have had a short up here and been able to win. But, it, but these trades would have all been different too, but I think it would have uh, changed for the better. So I think that this sensitivity is a little bit too tight for this chart, so I am going to change it. Uh, another thing I might change as well is uh, the targets. Had I had like uh, 15 and 25 ticks, for example, I would have uh, hit my goals instead of having at break even, I set like a 20 tick stop. So I think what happened here is a couple times I got stopped out, but that might have saved me in a few other instances. So um, still honing the settings on this higher time frame chart. I still think it's an excellent template. Uh, I'm curious to hear if anyone else traded this uh, template. Um, speaking of that, um, as we share these templates and people are trading them, um, please do study the template and try to understand the settings and what they mean. If you're not learning why it takes a trade or the you know the logic behind why we have our money management in such a way or the sensitivity you're you're not learning anything you're just following someone else's settings and y you know you're just not getting ahead in your in your trading if you don't understand what's going on somebody asked about uh you know sh uh, can i trail a a stop for the daily goal and the answer to that question is the whole, it defeats the whole purpose of a daily goal. The reason you have a daily goal is to exercise and maintain discipline. If you uh, hit your daily goal, let's say it's $500, then you stop trading. You've hit your goal. And the, and the same goes with the loss limit, and I did that today. I have a loss limit. My loss limit is 500 so I had horrible slippage here. But I was tempted to trade again, but I didn't because... Uh, it's really important to stick to your rules. That's what gives you an edge is not letting yourself and your emotions get the best of you and trading like a wild man. And we've all done it, but the auto trader brings that to the table. It really helps you to keep things under control, and it's really a low-stress way to trade. I, I really stress out when I trade manually. It's, it's, um, it's a lot of pressure. But the way I trade the auto trader is, you know, I turn it on and I let it trade and it either has a winner or a loser. And, and I know from my settings and my testing that I have a positive expectation that I've tested my settings and simulation and uh, come up with good results. So therefore, I know that when I trade live, I should have a positive expectation. That's the way you should be doing it. Let's take a look at some other charts. Uh, first, I want to show a five-minute chart, and I want to show the volatility today, which was extraordinarily low compared to what we've been having. 
So this is a five minute chart and the Fib grid is plotted on here and you can see down here uh, the current range was only 370 ticks where yesterday it was uh, 914 ticks and you can kind of see the difference in the volatility. This is the regular session only so there was a gap up of about uh, 100 points. Uh, that's 400 ticks. So uh, the 24 hour volatility was probably much greater but the daily volatility um, on the daily session this was actually a narrow range day the volatility being uh, 75 percent less than the average daily range and you can kind of see that on the chart so that might have had something to do looking at uh, today's action you can see it was pretty much uh, range bound and a sideways uh, day with nowhere near near the uh, normal range of the NASDAQ. So what this is telling us is the market is pausing right here. And one of two things is going to happen. It might do this for another day or so, but it will probably see a sharp move either to the upside or the downside. It's impossible to tell right now. Unfortunately, I did not trade my very reliable 250 tick line break chart. That was a winner today. Um, and that hit its goal of 750 um, and also had probably crappy slippage here. That's what I'm guessing. And uh, yeah, this chart has been really reliable. I wish I would have traded it, but woulda, shoulda, coulda, that's trading. The Superenco 8 with the open range filter has been very reliable. In spite of two losers here and a drawdown of 300, it came back uh, with these two winners and uh, hit its goal. Now, this trade was avoided because of the open range filter. And so, pretty nice uh, comeback here. I think I've shown this chart probably five or six or seven days in a row and hardly a loser. Today was no exception. Again, the open range filter, there was a loser to start, but that was overcome by these two winners right here, and this hit its goal of 500. This is another Superenco 8 chart, but it starts trading at uh, 5 minutes before 2 p.m. or 13.55 Eastern. And you can see that right here. And there's usually a move around 2 o'clock. And it was just enough for this to hit its goal of 600 with a couple of ticks of slippage right here. So back to that higher time frame, 450 tick. So I traded this uh, in SIM. This is in SIM, this chart, but I changed the settings. I put a, um, still kept my tight sensitivity, but I changed the money management here to 20 and 25 ticks. And I had a 750 goal because I just wanted it to trade. And it reached an equity high of uh, 400, drew down, and then came back and reached an equity high of about 550 uh, with this trade. And then it got caught in two losers. So uh, with a $500 goal, I would have hit my target. And again, I think the 0.8 sensitivity is a little bit too tight. I think the way to trade this would be to use stop loss mode 2, which is the prior bar higher low plus or minus stop loss. So uh, I think the stop loss should be the high of the bar plus a certain number of ticks and that would allow me to get out. Now the way Jim has it is he has the stop loss at a hundred ticks and what he's counting on is that when the higher time frame changes filter that uh, changes direction that that's less than a hundred ticks away but you can kind of see by this trade here that that can result in a pretty large stop loss and if that didn't happen for some reason um, only one loser would would pretty much take you out. So I'm um, not sure that's the best option with uh, a hundred tick stop loss on two contracts. That's a thousand. You're risking a thousand dollars. I think that's a little bit high on this chart, but uh, that might be a reason it works because it's giving it lots of room. Anyway, that's all for today's.